If you want to see me destroy the Morphe 39A Dare to Create palette, stick around. It's Elen with another video and this one is special. We are going to tear a palette apart. This is the 39A Dare to Create palette. 39 because there are 39 shadows, 7 big pans, and 32 smaller or regular size Morphe pans. And I can't deal with this packaging. It is too big. I got it end of September. I was super excited about it. Never used it because I just, I can't, I can't deal. It's just, it's just too big. But I can definitely think of this palette as singles. And there are some some very obvious trios and quads of colors in here. So I have a plan. I'm just going to grab what else I need to tell you about that plan and I'll be right back. I was going to grab some other ones, but I don't need to. So I'm, I've got a couple here that will do the trick. Okay, so, and I don't know why I have the plastic still on. It's so satisfying to see the plastic come off something. Just like that. Love it. And I've got two of them to do. Here's another one. I love doing that. Okay, so these are Anastasia quads, and what you'll see here is that I have some eyeshadows in here already, so there's one empty pen here, and you'll see that there's a magnet at the bottom. So a single eyeshadow, assuming it's magnetized, but I do have some stick-on magnets if I need it, if it is, if it can stick to a magnetic base, then it just pops right into the pan and it really securely stays in the pants. So it's it's really great. I get these from Sephora. You'll see that it says Anastasia on it. These are Anastasia empty quads that you can buy at Sephora. Go under Anastasia single shadows. And if you scroll down, you will see these for $1 each. I know, $1 each for a quad compact like this. It's fantastic. So if it is the same size standard shadow as a an Anastasia shadow, they will fit in here. And I did check these pans against the 39A and they fit. So I have a bunch of these. Um, based on the fact that there are 32 shadows, four shadows each in here, I need eight of these and I do have them. I have eight of these to take the shadows that are in the 39A and make some interesting custom quads. So that is my plan. But the first thing I need to do is tear this palette up. And I intend to do that on video for you in a sped up, um, I guess, edit. And, um, and I'll get, do a little bit of explanation along the way where it's needed. But I want you to see me destroy the palette and not the shadows. I can't see people prying eyeshadows out of cardboard packaging anymore. It just kills me. So hopefully you seeing my approach with the 39A, I've never depotted a cardboard Morphe palette before, but I've de depotted three cardboard palettes so far and I've had no casualties of, you know, losing a shadow or uh, losing half a shadow or something. So I want to show you how it works and, um, and we'll go from there. So we'll wrap up at the end, but for now, I hope you enjoy the massacre <laughs> and I look forward to uh, hearing what you think of the process. So be back after I'm done. Okay, so we are going to depot all of these shadows in the Morphe 39A and I only have a few tools at, that I'm going to be using, an old steak knife and also an old straight blade to help cut underneath the different pans. So that is all I'm going to use and let's get started. So here is a regular cardboard packaging and you'll notice that there is an elevated part and then the outside capsule or cover. So what I want to do is remove the connection between the outside packaging and this inside plate. So let's get started. So I've never done one of these before. So we have to figure it out nice and slow. 
just want to make sure I'm in frame for you, okay? All right. Putting my knife right in here. I'm just trying to pry these two apart. So I'm being gentle. I'm not trying to harm the shadows in any way. Again, we're wrecking the palette, not the shadows. So this is coming apart reasonably easily. Let's see where we're at here. Okay, not too hard. Okay, so first step done. So I have this outside packaging that is completely done. I might have an idea for this, so I'm just gonna set it aside. And now this tray that we have to, again, disassemble. So I'm just going to take off the excess that we don't need from the outside packaging. And if you're curious about how a Morphe palette that is in cardboard is built, there you have it. Now you see on the back, that there is a wrapping around the edges. So that's a nice way of hiding the fact that there are two layers of cardboard in here. So we are going to take apart these corners and reveal the cardboard all around. Takes a bit of doing to figure out exactly where the weakest point is. And I want to do it in a way that does not disturb the shadows, obviously. Ah, there we go. Okay, do you see how this corner is coming up? Just like that? Okay, that's what we want. So we're going to go after this. Wedge in here. and get at this paper. So hopefully you can still see that. Yeah, okay, so this is what it's looking like. Sorry about, I just knocked the camera a little bit. Okay. So we want to get, okay, now do you see, right there, do you see the layers of cardboard? That's what we're after, that's what we're after. And luckily it looks like there's no glue once we're past the fold and I've just managed to get my knife right down here, so it should be easier now. This is part of why I like cardboard packaging, because all of this is going to go nicely in my fireplace. I don't have to throw it in the dump. Okay, we're going to continue on. It's amazing how quickly packaging can be revealed for what it truly is, isn't it? I just stuck my thumb in the black. <laughs> but to me, the only difficulty for depotting cardboard is to try not to get your fingers in the shadows but oh i'm surprised there must have been there must have been a little bit of shadow that was pressed a little bit up and so you see some a little bit here but that's not that's not the process itself there was something going on with the pen on the side i'm going to just forge ahead continue on oh and you see here look at this this is the the magnet closure right there Cool. Just gonna be more careful about where I put my fingers.
we really need to reveal the entire side. There we go. Okay, now, um, as you may have deduced, there's that second magnetic, magnetic uh, piece here. I uh, might save that to see if I can do anything with it. Okay, so we continue on each side. I'm going to get every side of cardboard done. Okay, I'll just speed this up so you don't have to watch this whole thing. I think you've got a good idea of what I'm doing. And uh, we'll talk once it's done. Okay, so as you can see, it's a lot of destruction of the palette, but you'll see that all the shades are still fine. Um, again, that little side lifted, I'm not quite sure why, but um, I think you'll agree that the palette looks very much like it did before. Now what we need to do is we need to separate the pieces of cardboard here. So I'm going to be inserting my very thin knife along the edge here and try to displace the pans. And I think that the pans are too two layers of cardboard deep. So I'm going to start with the, the furthest layer and see if I hit the back of the pan. And if not, I will go for the second layer. So let's see how it goes. Yep, yeah, I was right. Okay, so you'll see that the palette, oops, sorry, knocking the camera again. I th I'm hoping you can see the pan right there. So it is stuck on the, this back side. So I'm going to pry this open all around as much as I can. Try not to disturb the pans. So I've got one side done. Going to the next side. Okay, one more side. Now, like I said, I've not I've never done a Morphe cardboard palette, but I've done other cardboard palettes, so this should still work the same. I'm hoping it's not glued throughout. I'm hoping that this will come apart once I have the last side done, but I guess we'll find out. Just learning as I go here on this style of palette. Okay, let's see how this goes. Moment of truth. Now, this is how you depot a cardboard palette. Do you see how they're all nice and secure in their backing? All I have to do now is use this knife and cut underneath each one of the shadows. So let's get rid of some of this junk. And just for ease, I'm going to take back the Morphe palette and put the shadows right in here so that we can see them as I take them apart. And we're going to go in order for now. We're going to start from this side, obviously. So all I'm doing is cutting the glue behind the pan. And the moment it lifts off, we won't do anything else for now. All I'm taking is the rest of the cardboard off, but I'll clean it off properly once we've got them all depotted. You'll see some shadow coming off. There seems to be some shadow, I guess, through the pressing process that snuck out on the side of the pan, but it's not shadow that's coming up because of what I'm doing. 
Uh, like for example, here you'll see a bunch of shadow that was spilled over. That has nothing to do with, with me cutting. This one looks a lot like Rune from um, Cleona. I'll have to compare those. Just in the pan anyway, they look similar. Okay, first row done. No casualties. This is good. Next row. Like I said, we'll clean those off. Oops. Just, I'm speaking too soon here. Being a klutz. Okay, there we go. No damage, but there could have been. I'm just not paying attention. I'm just gabbing. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking and we're just going to speed through the rest of these. There is the junk. There are the shadows. I am going to change my setup and then clean behind the pans that you see there. I had one mishap that you will see where this pan flipped, oh, hang on, where this pan flipped onto this one, or actually I should say this one flipped onto the brown. Um, and I have to admit, I was thinking of the time crunch I was under because I have to get something, I have to get to something else. Um, but as you can see, if I hadn't all of a sudden thought about what I need to do next in my life, <laughs> I probably wouldn't have made that mistake. But as you can tell, let me just bring the palette closer. You can see how great these shadows look. They haven't suffered any kind of damage on the sides. Um, that you would normally see when you have to depot from the top of the palette. So I highly recommend this method if you are depotting from cardboard. Okay, on to the next stage, which is scraping the back, labeling, and assembling them in the Anastasia quads. Okay, so I am back and we are ready to go into the next phase of the depotting of the Morphe shadows. Obviously they are depotted, but they are not cleaned off and put into their new home. So I'm going to start that right now. So I'm going to get my first Anastasia quad ready and start with, I'm just going to go by four shadows. So it doesn't really matter which way I start. I'm going to start down here. And what I want to do is I want to take off the glue. And based on a few of these, I was actually able to remove the glue without having to scrape. So I'm going to be trying that now on a bunch more of these. So hopefully I am able to take the glue off. Might be more uh, easier said than done but it did come off on some of them. So hopefully I'll be able to reproduce that. Let's see if I can do it with my fingers here. Sometimes the fingers are the best tool, aren't they? Yeah, it's starting to come off. So this is great that their, their glue is that malleable, getting a little bit of black shadow on my fingers here, but Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just pulling this glue off. This is great. It's not always the case that the glue comes off like this, but this is very good. And now I'm going to find out if these um, go are going to be secure in the Anastasia quad or if I have to glue a, um, a piece of metal on the back to make them magnetized. So we are going to find out very soon. Okay, good. So this glue actually comes off pretty easily. Now what I will eventually do, I just don't have stickers right now, is I'm going to put the name of the shadow on the back here. And I did take a good picture of the palette and I have video of it. So I'll be able to know which what the name is of all the shadows. 
and I'm going to stick it right in here and see if it sticks. And yes, it is sticking. So the shadows are secure in these Anastasia palettes, which is so fantastic. Okay, so we are going to go with the next one. And this is one where the glue did come off as I was taking it out of the palette. So maybe, possibly, you can be uh, more uh, delicate than, than I was in uh, taking the palette apart and you can get the glue off each one of these and spare yourself this extra step. So if you can, that would be fantastic for you. So hopefully I'm in camera. Yeah, just making sure that I'm in frame here for you. Okay, this one is coming off a lot easier than the black, which is great. There we go. And I'm keeping the quad the same as what is in the palette, so I'll have less trouble figuring out the names and whatnot. So hopefully, let's see if they all... Oh, some of them are not sticking. Okay, so that's good to know. So I will magnetize the ones that need um, help. And with that, if you want to know what I'm going to be using, let me just pull that out. You can get these at, um, just on, on, just need to pull some stuff out here. You can get these on Amazon. Um, you can get them a hundred to a couple hundred at a time. They're not very expensive. You peel off the plat, the, um, the paper and just stick it on the bottom of the uh, pan. I'll do a couple right now for you so you can just see how it works. And then um, I will just, all I'll do is, um, well, I might I might just go ahead and, and do all these as I go and I'll just speed it up. So you glue, you glue it on. Not sure why that one has a, a, <laughs> a tape on both sides, but you glue it on and then it should stick much, e yeah, there we go. It's stuck very easily onto the uh, Anastasia quad. So I'm not sure why the black stuck, but I'll take it. And so this one does not have adhesive on the other side. So I'm not sure if that one that I just showed you that I just used the first time was faulty, but now the palette should, yeah, it's all sticking very nicely. I'm not quite sure why the black it, it feels like it's, it's stuck. So that one has, oh, that one has two on it. That's what's going on. They're stuck to each other. Ha, that makes more sense. Okay, so that one I did. This one, yeah, this one is actually not sticking, so I will do. So obviously they all need a backing. For some reason the black one doesn't, no idea why. But we just glue it on, oh, shoot glue it on, and then place it securely. Now they are securely in the quad, and I have one quad done. Okay, so we're gonna go with the next quad. Just opening up the box here, taking the plastic off, and I'm going to just get rid of my junk as I go. Okay, now I'm going to just speed through the rest and these guys are going to go into a Tarte Magnetic Palette. So I'm just going to open that up and use it as I go. Um, so I'll open it as I need to put these in. Actually, I might just take care of those right away and then do the, the, um, the rest of the quads. So again, I will speed it up for you and we can wrap it up at the end.
there you go. We have got 32 single single eyeshadows available in eight quads now. And as you saw, there was minimal damage to the shadows. A little nick here, a little bit of lift here from that shadow having the um, shadow having gone past the pan. And as I lifted off the, um, the shadow, um, the, the pan, some of the shadow lifted off. So a little bit, sorry, little bit in here, right here. This one, just a little mark in here. Uh, this is the one that uh, flipped over onto one of the uh, larger seven pan. And finally, this matte green, which I'm very unhappy about, is one that a little uh, dent, uh, it, like a, a chunk came off. I'm not quite sure why, but I mean, you're manipulating uh, pans, so it can happen. Um, I'm just hoping that it's going to keep its integrity uh, for the rest of the pan. Some stuff like that can happen when we're manipulating single shadows, but um, I'm okay with it. What, what I'm super jazzed about is that there's nothing about, there's no need to repress anything, everything is fine. Um, and then on this one, of course, um, these two, where's the other one? Uh, these two are a bit of a pair because one flipped over onto the other one. But am I unhappy? Absolutely not. I would say that apart from me wanting to be in a hurry as I was doing, um, uh, that, wherever it was, that pan, um, because I was thinking about work, that's probably the biggest mistake that I made. Um, but I would consider this depotting very successful. I'm very happy that this palette is done. I might reuse the packaging for something. I'm not sure. It might be just a little project. But um, definitely happy with these eight quads and those pans I will use as I need to for a base shade and will probably pan them one at a time. I don't see myself reaching for them except maybe for these two um, as very easy transition shades for my skin tone. But these quads I have... Uh, an idea for along with a few other quads. So you will see very soon, I'm sure, what I have planned for these because I'm pretty excited about it. I would say this depotting is done and I hope that you will consider if you have cardboard packaging, uh, destroying the packaging and not the shadows. Oh, and if you're wondering about the labeling, I will do that a little bit later. I did keep the quads exactly in the order of the palette, so it's going to be very easy for me to associate the names and get the labeling done. So that's it. 39 shadows depotted, 32 of which are in quads now, safe and secure. And uh, I look forward to telling you what my plan is for those quads later on. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had a good time. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. But for now, take care.